Hey, I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and today I'm going to show you how to succeed with nylon. Nylon is an incredibly versatile and commonly used plastic in manufacturing. From tools, to fabrics, to rope, to gearboxes and drills and RC cars, the properties of nylon make it great when you need something that's both durable and strong and for a functional 3D print. However, some of the features of nylon also make it a little difficult to print and a little temperamental. So let's dive into what it takes to take your prints from great to awesome. Tip number one, all metal hot ends. So PTFE lined hot ends start to break down at about 240 degrees Celsius and nylon needs at least 250 to print successfully. In that case, you can upgrade to an E3D V6 hot end, which is all metal, which means you can print up to 300 degrees Celsius. Now before you start upgrading your printer, make sure you've printed the replacement mounts in order to fit the E3D on your printer. Tip number two, make sure your first layer is right. Now I find that if you print a little too close with nylon, what can actually happen is that the first layer peels away from an otherwise successful print. So in my case, I like to move the Z offset up by 0.05 millimeters from what I normally use with PLA, but it's a delicate balance. Too close and your first layer rips off, too far and your print just doesn't stick. So play with the settings, see what works best. Tip number three, print bed material and adhesion. Nylon does need a heated bed if you want to print successfully with it, but it doesn't need to be as hot as you think. 60 degrees Celsius is perfect, as long as you have a PVA glue smear on the print bed. Heated glass with PVA glue is the best choice for nylon. Other print bed materials like BuildTac, PEI, or some other surface, well, they don't stick too well to the nylon, but what you can do is just put some glue stick over that and it'll stick pretty well. Otherwise, you could try using Gerolite unheated and nylon will stick pretty well to that too. Tip number four calibrating your print temperature. Depending on your printer, you will need to change the print temperature for nylon. I like to print 250 degrees Celsius on one machine and 260 degrees Celsius on another. Totally depends on how the firmware of the printers read temperatures because the 250 degree one came out perfect, but 250 on the other came out a little weak. So play with the temperatures, raise them by five degrees until you get some really nice layer adhesion, but just print some small test cubes until you find what works. Tip number five, layer cooling fans. With PLA, you want your layer cooling fans on the entire time, but with an Ilon, having them on can have some pretty disastrous results. Some of the foosball players for the foosball table build with Bob from I Like To Make Stuff, well, I left the layer cooling fan on them accidentally. Some otherwise great prints have little to no layer adhesion, and any sort of stress from the actual foosball causes them to just shear in half. When I reprint them without the layer cooling fans on the same machines, they come out perfectly. So with nylon, just turn off your layer cooling fans and your prints will come out a lot better. Tip number six, print speeds. Unlike some other materials where you need to slow it down in order to get a good print, nylon prints the same as any other material. So 10 millimeters per second, 80 millimeters per second, whatever works for PLA and ABS should work just fine for nylon. Tip number seven, keep nylon dry. The biggest thing with nylon is it's incredibly hygroscopic, which means it will readily absorb water from the air. Now, contrary to popular belief, you can't pull that water out with just desiccant packets. What you'd have to do is actually dry it out in an oven. Now we have a vacuum oven, so we can put it in there, leave it for about 15 minutes, turn the vacuum on, and all the moisture is out of it. For most people, that's not an option. So what you can do is put it in your normal kitchen oven, set it to 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and leave it there for six to eight hours. After that, put it in a sealed container, throw some desiccant in there, and only take it out when you're printing with it, and when you're done, immediately put it back in. Tip number eight, post-processing. Unfortunately, nylon's pretty resilient against sandpaper, so you're not gonna find much luck trying to sand nylon to get your prints to remove the layer lines. Not like PLA, not like ABS. It's pretty tough. So you're gonna have to use some resins like XTC3D or some other epoxy resin to coat the print. Or you could just use a straight up flexible paint like we did with the foosball players. Nylon only used to be made in two colors, natural and black. But now you have Pro Series Nylon, which comes in red, orange, green, blue, white, gray, black. There's a much larger variety of colors than there used to be. However, you can still dye your filament if it's not in the color you want. Just by using regular fabric dyes designed for polyesters, you can dye white filament pink or try and get a mix between reds and blues. Whatever you can mix the dyes into, you can probably get your nylon filament to be that same color. And that's it. There's a lot of information to process, but hopefully it's enough for you to start printing nylon and start printing it successfully. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.